Joe Holm and welcome back to Code Search. All right, guys, here we are again with the Book of Maccabees, and I'm here with uh, Elijah sitting in uh, for this read. If you remember, we stopped with Chapter Four, and so that's where we're going to pick up with this reading. We'll probably read on to maybe Chapter Ten, but um, here we go. Uh, and let's just give some backstory on this. We're talking about. Um, essentially seven brothers at this time and there's a rebellion going on um, they do not agree with what's going on with the temple the temple's been defiled it doesn't even have uh, uh, Levites as priests anymore um, so they're standing up for their faith and, uh, and I think it was Philip Hughes made mention in the last video um, about Antiochus Epiphanes and being a picture of the Antichrist, and that's very true. So uh, this could very well be um, a picture of the end times because they, they certainly thought it was when it was all going on. But here we go. Then took uh, then took Georgius five thousand footmen <coughs> and a thousand of the best horsemen and removed out of the camp by night, and to the end of uh, to, and to the end he might rush upon the camp. Uh, Yehudim <clears throat> and smite them suddenly and the men in the fortress were, were his guides. Now when Yehuda heard of therefore him, of himself removed and the valiant men with him and he smite and, and he might smite the king's army which he was which was with him at uh, Yesim while well, I guess yet the forces were dispersed from the camp in the main season, uh, Georgias by night into the camp of Yehuda. And when he found no man there, he sought them in the mountains. For he said, These fellows flee from us. But as, new, but as soon as it was, was day, Yehuda showed himself in the plain and was 3,000 men, who nevertheless had neither armor nor swords to their minds. And they saw the camp of the heathen, and it was strong and well and well harnessed, and encompassed around about with horsemen, and these were expert of war. Then said Yehuda to the men that were with him, Fear ye not their multitude, neither ye be afraid of their assault. Remember how our fathers were delivered at the in, at the Red Sea, when Pharaoh pursued them with an army. Now, therefore, let us cry unto the heavens, if peradventure Yahuwah will have mercy upon us. <coughs> Excuse me, got a scratch in my throat, folks. <coughs> and have mercy upon us, and remember the covenant of our fathers, and destroy this host before our face this day. That so the heathen may know that there is one who delivers and saves Israel. Then the strangers lifted up their eyes and saw them coming over against them. Wherefore, uh, wherefore they went out of the camp to battle. But when they, but they that were with Yehuda sounded their shofars. So they joined the battle, and the heathen, being discomforted, fled into the plain. Howbeit all the hindmost, howbeit all the hindmost of them were slain with the sword. For they pursued them unto Gesem, and to the plains of Edom and Ashdod and Yavnel, so that there were so that were slain upon them three thousand men. This done, Yehuda returned again with his host from pursuing them, and he said to the people, Be not greedy of the spoil, inasmuch as there is battle before us. And Gorgias and his host are here by us in the mountain. But stand ye now against our enemies and overcome them. And after this ye may boldly take their spoils. As Yehuda was yet speaking these words, there appeared a part of them looking out of the mountains. And when they had perceived that they were Yehudim, they put on their host to fight, uh, to flight, and they were burning with tent. Excuse me. And when, and when they perceived that they were Yehudim, they put on their host to flight and were burning the tents, for the smoke that was seen declared it was done. 
and therefore they perceive these things, and we are so afraid, and seeing that in the host of Yehuda, in the plain ready to fight, they fled every one into the land of the strangers. Then Yehuda returned to spoil, to the spoil, and to the tents which they got much gold and silver, and bulk silk, excuse me, blue silk, and purple of the sea, and great riches. After they went home, they sung the song of thanksgiving and praised Yahuwah in heaven, because he is good and because his mercy endures forever. Thus Yisrael had great deliverance this day. Now all the strangers that had encamped uh, in, in them and told Lysias what had happened, who he, when he heard them, him and when who excuse me, when he had heard himself, therefore was confounded and discouraged, because neither such things as he would, as he would have done unto Israel, nor such things as the king commanded him, were to come to pass. The next year, therefore, following Lysias, gathered together three score, three score thousand choice men of foot, and five and five thousand horsemen that he might subdue them. So when they came unto Edom, he pitched their, their tents by Beth Sirah. And Yehuda met with them 10,000 men. And when he saw that the mighty army, he prayed and said, Blessed are you, O Savior of Israel, who, will, who did quell the violence of the mighty man by the hand of, the, of your servant David, and gave of the host of the strangers to, into the hands of Jonathan, the son of Sheol, uh, and his armor bearer. Shut up this army in, in the hand of your people Israel, and let them be confounded in their power and their horsemen. Make them to be of no courage, and call the boldness of their strength to fall away, and let them quake in their destruction. Cast them down with the sword of them that love you, and let those who know your name praise you with thanksgiving. So they joined battle, and there were slain of the host of Lysias about 5,000 men. Even before them they were slain. And when Lysias saw his armies put to fight, and the manliness of Yehuda's, soul, uh, of Yehuda's soldiers, and how they were ready either to live or die violently, he went unto Antioch, and gathered together a, command, a company of strangers, and having made his army greater than he was, than it was, he purposed to come again against Yehuda. And when he said, Yehuda and his brethren, behold, our enemies are discomforted, and let us go to cleanse and to get it, dedicate the sanctuary. And there we go. That's Hanukkah, uh, the dedication of the sanctuary, folks. And when they saw that the sanctuary was desolate and the altar profane, and the gates burned up and the shrubs growing in the courts and in the forest. And in one, of, in, in one of the mountains, yea, the priest's chambers pulled down, and they rent their clothes and made grant, uh, great lamentation. Remember, this is Antiochus had done come through here and uh, essentially tried to wipe away um, any holiness in the temple. He, he desecrated and uh, sacrificed a pig on the altar. He put up a statue of Zeus. And so the temple is in a bad state at this point. Um, and here they are, they're, they're renting, they're tearing their clothes and they're lamenting. And they cast ashes upon their heads and they fell down flat to the ground to their faces and blew an alarm with the shofars and cried toward heaven. And when you appoint, uh, appointed again certain men to fight against those that were in the fortress until he had cleansed the sanctuary, so he chose priests of blameless conversation, such as pleasure in the Torah, who cleansed the sanctuary and bore out the defiled stones into the unclean place. And when they consult, and when they, and when as they consulted to do with the altar of burnt offering, which was profane, they thought it best to pull it down, and lest it should be a reproach to them, because the heathen had defiled it. Wherefore they pulled it down and laid the stones in, in the mountain of the temple as in, in a convenient place until there would come a prophet to show them what to be done with them. 
And they took the whole stones according to the Torah and built a new altar according to the former and made up the sanctuary and the things that were within the temple and hollowed the courts. And they also made new holy vessels into the temple and they brought the menorah and, and the altar of burnt offerings and of incense and the table. And see, there, so there's a detailed account of what they were doing here. And you can find this in all the prophets, really. Um, when Ezra got back to Jerusalem, um, there were scrolls and things that had been hidden inside of walls and things like that in, in the time of Nehemiah. They were coming out. And so um, they had recorded uh, details that were not to be forgotten. So um, this is what they're doing. They're reproducing the things that were defiled in there. And there's, there's detailed record on how to do that. So they knew how to do this. And so they're trying to uh, revitalize what, um, what was desolated. And upon the altar they burned incense, and the lamps that were upon them, the menorah they lighted, and they give that it may give light to the temple. Furthermore, they set the loaves upon the table and spread out the veils and finished all the works which they had begun to make. Now on the fifth and twentieth of the ninth month, which is called the month of Kislev, in the hundred and forty and eighth year, they rose up early in the morning and offered sacrifice according to the Torah upon the new altar of burnt offerings which they had made. Look at what time and at what day of the heathen had profound it, even in that it was dedicated with songs and cisterns and harps and cymbals, and all the people fell upon their faces, worshiping and praising Elohim of heaven, who had given them good success that they keep the dedication of the altar eight days and the offering burnt of, of the offering with gladness and sacrifice the sacrifices of deliverance and praise. And they decked also the forefront of the temple with crowns of gold and with shields and, with, and the gates upon the chambers they renewed and hanged doors upon them. And thus they were in, and thus they were a very great gladness among the people for that the reproach of the heathen was put away. Moreover, Yehuda and his brother of the whole assembly of Israel ordained that the days of the dedication and the altar should be kept in their season from year to year by space of eight days. And this is Hanukkah, folks. From five to the twentieth day of the month of Kislev, with myrrh and gladness, at the time, they also built up the Mount Zion with the high walls and the strong towers round about, lest the other people should come and tread it down as they had done before. And they set up a garrison to keep it and fortified Betsurah to guard it, and the people might have def uh, defense against Edom. Chapter 5. Now when the nations round about heard that the altar was built, the sanctuary renewed as before, and dis it displeased them very much. Where, wherefore, they had thought to destroy the generation of Yaakov that was among them, and thereupon they began to slay and destroy the people. Then Yehudah fought against the children of Esau and Edom at uh, Arbitine, because they besieged Gael, and he gave them great a great overthrow, and abated them courage, and took their spoils, and remembered the injury of the children of beyond, who had been who had been a snare and an offense to the people, and that they lay in wait for them in their ways, and he shut them therefore in the towers, and he encamped against them, and destroyed them utterly, and burned the towers of that place with fire, and all that were therein. There afterward he passed over to the children of Ammon, and where he had found a mighty power, and much people with Timotheus, their captain. So he fought many battles with them, till at length they were discomforted before him, and he smote them. And he had taken Yezar, 
with the towns belonging thereto and return unto Yehud. And we, the heathen that were at Gael assembled themselves together against Yisrael that were their quarters, that were in their quarters, to destroy them. But they fled to the fortress of Damathia and sent letters to Yehuda and his brethren. The heathen that are around are uh, round about us are assembled together against us to destroy us. And they're preparing to come and take the fortress whereunto we are fled. Timotheus being the captain of their host, come now therefore and deliver us from their hands, for many of the, us are slain. Yea, all our brethren that were in the place of Tohid Yahu were put to death, and their women and their children also carried away captives, and borne away their stuff, and, their, and they have destroyed there about a thousand men. While these letters were yet, are we are yet reading? Behold, came the other messengers from uh, Galilee with their clothes rent, who reported this wise and said, "They of Echo and of Sor and of Zidon and of all of Galilee of the other people are assembled together against us to consume us." Now when Judah and the people heard these words, there assembled a great assembly together to consult what should they do from their brethren that they were in trouble. And they assaulted and assaulted of them. Then said Yehuda to Shimon, his brother, choose you out men and go and deliver your brethren that are in Gigliel. And for I and Jonathan, my brother, will go into the country of Gilad. So that, so he left Yosef, the son of Zeriachu, and uh, Arzayim, captains of the people, and the remnant of the host of Yehuda, to keep it, unto whom he gave commandment, saying, Take ye charge of this people, and see that ye make not war against the heathen until the time we come again. Now unto Shimon were given three thousand, men to go into Gilead and, and unto Yehuda 8,000 men for the country of Gilead and went Shimon to Gilead where he had fought many battles with the heathen so the heathen he uh, so that the heathen were discomfited by him and he pursued them into the gate of Echo and there were slain of the heathen about 3,000 men whose spoils they took and those that were at Gilead with the Arbutus, with their women and their children, all that they had, took he away with them and brought them unto, unto Yehuda with great joy. Yehuda Maccabee also and his brethren, Yonatan, went over to over Yarden and to travail three days journey in the wilderness where they met with Nabathian, who came unto them as a peacemaker in a peacemaker manner, manner. And he told them everything that had happened to their brethren in the land of Gilad, and how that many of them were shut up in Borsora and Beor and Alme and Caspor and Magad and Astaroth and Carnaim. All these cities are strong and great. And they were shut up in the rest of the cities of the country of Gilad. And then against the, and and that against tomorrow they had appointed to bring their host against the forts, and also to take them and destroy them all in one day. Where hereupon Yehuda and his host turned suddenly by the way of the wilderness unto Basora, and he had got, won the city. He had slew all the males with the edge of the sword and took all their spoils and burned the city with fire. From hence he removed by night and went until he came into the fortress. And early in the morning they took and they looked up and behold, there was innumerable people here uh, bearing ladders and other engines of war to take the fortress. For as they assaulted them, when Yehuda therefore saw that the battle has begun, 
and that the cry of the city had went up to heaven with shofars and with great sound, he said to his host, Fight this day your bro for your brethren. So he went forth behind him in three companies, who sounded their shofars and cried with prayer. And the host of Timotheus, knowing that it was Yehuda, Maccabee, fled from him. Wherefore he would smoke them with a great slaughter, so that they were killed of and so there were killed of them that day about 8,000 men. This done, Yehuda turned aside to Mispat, that after he had assaulted and took and slew all the males therein, he received the spoils thereof and burnt it with fire. From hence he went and took Caspor, Magad, Beor, and other cities of the country of Gilad. And after these things gathered Timotheus another host and encamped against Rephon beyond the brook. So, so Yehuda went, excuse me, so Yehuda sent men to espy the host who brought him word, saying that the brethren had been round about us and are assembled unto them and are very, and even a very great host. He has also hired the Avari of Rehim to help them, and they had pinched their tents beyond the road, ready to come and fight against you. Among, upon this, Yehuda went to meet them. Then Timotheus said to the captains of his host, When Yehuda and his host come over near the brook, if he passes over first unto us, we shall not be able to withstand him, for he will mightily prevail against us. But if he, were, but if he be afraid, and camp beyond the river, we shall go over to him and prevail against him. Now when Yehuda heard, now when Yehuda came near to the brook, he caused the scribes of the people to remain by the brook, unto whom he gave commandment, saying, Suffer no man to remain in the camp, but let all come to battle. So when he came first over to them, and all the people after him, and all the and all the heathen, being discomforted before him, cast away their weapons and fled into to the temple that was at Ashtaroth, Karnaim. And when they took the city and burned the temple and all that were there, thus was Ashtaroth, Karnaim, subdued. Neither could they stand any longer before Yehuda. When Yehuda gathered together all Israel that were in his country of Gilead, from the least unto the greatest, even their women, and their children and their stuff, a very great host, to the end that they might come into the land of Yehuda. Now when they had came into, upon Ephron, this was the great city in the way thus which they should go, very well fortified. They could, they could turn not from it, neither on the right hand nor the left, but must, but must pass through the midst of it. And they of the city shut them out and stopped up the gates with stones. Whereupon Yehuda sent upon them a, in a peaceable manner, saying, uh, Let us pass through your land and go to our own country, and none do you any hurt. We will only pass through on foot, howbeit they would not open unto him. Wherefore Yehuda commanded a proclamation and to be made throughout the, the host, that every man should pitch his tent in the place where he was. So the soldiers pitched and, and the assaulted the city all in the day and all the night, until the, at length the city was delivered into his hands. Who then slew all the males with the edge of the sword, and raised, and raised the city and took the spoils thereof, and passed through the city over them that were slain. After this went they over to Yarden, into the great plain before Bethsan, and Yehuda gathered together those who came behind and extorted the people all the way, though he, till, till they came into the land of Yehuda. So they went into the Mount Zion with joy and gladness, and they offered burnt offerings because not one of them were slain until, not one of them were slain until they had returned in peace. Now the time as Yehuda and Jonathan were given in the land of Gilad, and Shimon his brother, and Gilead, also before Akko, 
Yosef and his son Zechariah, Zechariah, and Azariah, captains of the garrison, heard of the violent acts and the warlike deeds that they had done. Wherefore they had said, Let us come, let us also get us a name and go and fight against the heathen that they are around the violence. So they went. So when they had given charge unto the garrison that was with them, they went to they went toward Yarnell, and they came to Gorgias and his men out of, the, out of the city to fight against him. And so it was that Joseph and Azariah were put to flight and pursued the borders of Yehudah. And there were slain in that day of the people of Israel about 2,000 men. Thus was a great overthrow among the children of Israel, because they were not obedient unto Yehudah and his brethren. They thought to do some violent act, violent act. Moreover, these men came not of the seed of those that had delivered and was given to Israel. Howbeit the man Yehudah, and his brethren were greatly renowned in the sight of all of Israel and all of heathen, wheresoever their name was heard of, of them. You know, so much as the people assembled unto them with joyful acclamations, afterward went Yehudah forth with his brethren. And he fought against the children of Esau in the land toward the Negev. And he smote Chevron and the towns thereof and pulled down the fortresses of it, and he burned the towers round about it. And from thence he removed to go into the land of Philistine, and passed through Shemeron. At the time, certain priests desirous to show their valor were slain in battle, so that they went out to fight unadvisedly. So Yehuda turned to Ashdod and the land of the Philistine, and, and when he had pulled down their altars and burned their carved images with fire and spoiled their cities and returned to the land of Yehudah. About the time of King Antiochus traveled, traveled, chapter 6 by the way folks, about the time of Antiochus, excuse me, about the time King Antiochus traveling through the high countries heard saying that Elamiel's Elmanyol's, excuse me, I cannot see this word. In the country of Persia was a great city greatly renowned for riches, silver and gold, and there were and there was in the very rich temple, whereas the coverings of gold and breastplates and shields of Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian king, this was Alexander the Great, they're speaking of here. And you see how history uh, modern uh, Ancient history and the account of Maccabees kind of go together. So, like the seal, uh, uh, the Cyrus cylinder um, that validated um, the Bible when you know Cyrus put this together. He heard about himself in the Bible, so he recorded it on a cylinder. Uh, so there's cross references in history, and this is what I like about Maccabees. It does that. Um, so here's talking about Philip and. Alexander. And let me just get my place back and we'll continue. Philip and uh, the Macedonian king who reigned first among the Yavanim and left there. Wherefore he came and sought to take the city and to spoil it, but he was not able because of the city, having uh, had been warning thereof rose up against him and in battle, so he fled, and he departed thence with great heaviness, and returned to Babel. Moreover, there came unto him who brought him tidings into Persia, that the armies which were against the land of Judah were, out, were put to flight, and, they, and that Lysias, who went forth first with great power, was driven away of Yehudim, and they that were strong, made strong by their armor and by their power and by their store of spoils, and they that had gotten of the armies, 
And that was what they had gotten from the armies whom they had destroyed. Also they had pulled down the, uh, the abomination which had been set up in the altar of Jerusalem, that they had comp compassed about the sanctuary with high walls as before and his city Bethsura. Now, how, now when the king heard these words, he was astonished and sore moved, whereupon he laid him upon his bed and fell sick for grief, because he had not befall, because it had not befallen him as he looked before. And there he continued many days, for his grief was ever more and more, and he made account that he should die. Wherefore he called for his friends and said unto them, The sleep is gone from my eyes, and my heart fails for very care. And the thought with myself into what tribulation am I come, and I, how great the flood of misery is it where I, where, wherein how now I am, for I was bountiful and beloved in my power, but now I remember the evils that I had did at Jerusalem, and that I look all of the, and then I took all the vessels of gold and the silver that were therein, and sent to destroy the inhabitants of Yehuda without cause. I perceived thereof of this and the cause of the